What's up family, it's your boy King Obatunda and I'm back again with yet another episode. Uh, today I am located in Kabale town. Um, had to come back here to visit some family and friends before I head out back to America. But this episode is not about Kabale town, this episode is actually about Yege Yege. you read it right. So um, without further waiting I'm going to go ahead and get right into it because I have so much to discuss, so much to talk about. I'm going to give you guys a few pointers on how to stay safe. I'm going to give you guys a full rundown on whether Nyege Nyege was just like a uh, fire festival. For those of you who know what fire festival is about, uh, this rapper named Ja Rule and another individual um, scammed a whole bunch of people um, out of this like supposed to be exclusive festival somewhere. And when people got there, it was like very, very poor, like very shitty. So anyway, this episode is going to be a bit of a comparison to the two. So you guys uh, stand by for some more. Okay, family, so without further waiting, let's go ahead and get right into it. Uh, so my first impres impressions of when I entered Itanda Falls, I was actually quite amazed because I've never been to Itanda Falls before. I've never even been um, that far like into the village in that area of Jinja. I've been to Bujagali Falls, um, I mean, no, Bujagali, and, uh, which is the area um, in the village. And in the, the falls that I went to is Busowoko. I went to Busowoko Falls. And um, that was amazing. I, I, I love Busawoko. I go there quite often, you know what I mean? But Itanda, wow. Wow. <laughs> Itanda is better. I, I'm not going to lie about that. It's further. It takes a little bit longer to get there. Uh, the roads are, you know, a little rough, just like how it is in Busawoko. But uh, Itanda Falls was amazing. I absolutely enjoyed. Unfortunately, I only stayed for about 36 hours. So I didn't actually get to do a lot of fun stuff on the lake or the river, actually. And uh, for those of you who don't know about these falls in this area, this is where the Nile River begins. If you didn't know that, Jinja is where the Nile River begins, the source of the River Nile. It empties from Lake Nalubale. Um, we're not going to say the European name. It's Lake Nalubale, for those of you who want to say it. Nalubale. And um, it, it, it starts its journey to uh, the Nile River, basically. So, um, with that being said... Uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, my impressions of Itanda Falls and once again I, I, it was absolutely amazing the forest area um, where you know the falls is located uh, the water itself the overall scene was just amazing the weather was beautiful out there it rained a little bit you know like a little drizzle um, but for the most part it, it was it was amazing I, I enjoyed I enjoyed it so much I highly recommend people go to Itanda Falls have some patience because it is quite a bit of a drive but it is well worth the drive now Itanda Falls itself has um, two whitewater rapids um, on different sides uh, it also has little swirling pools because of the current so it is plenty of fun activities to do there um, for those of you who are into adventure you can definitely go whitewater rafting as I just said uh, for those of you who like mild adventure, you can go tubing, which is a mild version of whitewater rafting. It's just somebody's pulling you uh, by a kayak, and then you make your journey over to the base of where the waterfalls uh, slope down, and then it'll just push you on into the current, and then you're uh, spit you out somewhere in the um, the water area. So it's not really um, you know that dangerous, I would say, for those of you who are looking for that. 
it's not really that dangerous. Uh, it's actually pretty fun. Um, it's very mild, like I said, compared to the actual whitewater rafting. So that is something, if that's something that you want to get into, then that is something that I highly recommend all people to do. All right. So I said tubing, you can go whitewater rafting. You can also go bungee jumping on the opposite side of Etonda Falls. Um, you might have to take a boat to get there depending on which side of Etonda Falls you had uh, got there to because there's multiple entry points to the area. Um, you can, it's, it's multiple entry points to the area. So there's plenty of ways to get around there, whether you can take, um, if you're whitewater rafting, it'll spit you out down there and you have to take a, a, a boda or taxi or however your translation gets you back. It gets you back to your main part in the area. But um, if you take a boda boda to the main entry point of Etonda Falls, then you have to take a boat ride over across the river to the other side of the river, then you can get to the bungee jumping area, okay? So once again, there's plenty of fun activities to do, uh, some trekking, there are no dangerous predators in the area, so if that's what you're thinking about, there are no dangerous predators in the area. So you can go there and actually have a good time, and enjoy yourself, and get in the water without having to worry about something, you know, pulling you under, or whatever the case may be. Um, so once again, Etana Falls is amazing. i would never been there before, before and i would never been there before, and it was just absolutely amazing. I enjoyed so, so, so much. So um, my expectations before Nyege Nyege began, it was actually, uh, I had high expectations because I was told so many good things about um, Nyege Nyege. As far as, um, I had many people tell me that, you know, it was going to be, you know, a massive event. It was going to be a bunch of people there, a bunch of music, food, cultural things to do. It was just so much that uh, they had to offer. So definitely definitely i had high expectations of yege yege and um when i got there you know some of my expectations weren't met and i will get into that and then i had other expectations of you know some bad things that were going to happen and i saw some bad things so i'm going to get into it that's why i said you know um it's going to be a little bit of a comparison between fire festival and yege yege so um uh so as far as the expectations that I had, um, let's, I'll get into a, a few of them. So one of the things that I expected was the levels of security. The levels of security in um, Etana Falls was actually pretty decent. These guys had are made quite a bit of arrangements to um, make sure that everyone was safe and secure while you were inside of these camping areas and while you were also having a good time at the falls itself. So, um, with that being said, you know, I'll just talk about the different levels of security. Uh, on the outside of the festival, you had plenty of uh, police presence, you also had military presence, and you had local uh, security forces as well, which is just hired security. Um, everything was gated off properly with multiple stages of entry, so it wasn't like people just walk right in. You had to go through different levels of security in order to get in there. Uh, they did bag searching, they did a bunch of different uh, stuff. So it was multiple things that you, you can expect as far as uh, security went. And then when you got inside of the actual festival, there were uh, military uh, people just everywhere doing patrols around the surrounding area. Police were doing patrols within, you know, make sure people stay safe, stuff, you know, things of that nature. There were plenty of uh, police tents. So, you know, if you ever had a situation, you can go to police. Uh, also, they had uh, medical personnel out there. They had like a whole triage area. So if you got hurt, damaged, injured, or any of that nature, you got too drunk, you know, they can put some fluids in you real quick and get you back out there or, you know, get you to the hospital. Because like I said, you are about an uh, hour and a half uh, from town. I think it was about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. I'm not sure. But um, you're pretty far from town. So... They made sure that you know people were uh, able to get medical treatment if necessary while they were at the festival. You know what I'm saying? Give you some kind of triage before you have to go to the hospital, so you don't suffer the whole entire time along the way. So, again, the levels of security were actually pretty uh, decent. I really uh, think that they put a lot of effort into that to make sure that everything was going to be secure. Uh, of course, because there were a lot of celebs that were coming there from you know the international community. There were people that were coming from uh, the UK, people coming from South Africa, Nigeria, uh, Kenya, TZ, I mean, people from all over. So there were definitely multiple levels of security there, all right? Um, other than that, 
what else did I expect? Uh, the vendors, or not expect my impressions, the vendors that were set up there were actually set up in a decent way. So there are outside vendors that are outside the festival, and then there are vendors that are on the inside of the festival, which are completely different. Um, you had a lot of local vendors outside the festival, pretty much all local vendors. And it was just people, you know, pretty much trying to sell you something, whether it's a service, uh, food, clothes. Uh, uh, they even had a, a petting area for reptiles and stuff like that, if you're into that. So it was a lot. It was, I mean, it was just so much. It was a bit overwhelming at one point. And I will say that that's you guys got to be very careful, especially if you arrive in the evening or late at night. It's just so much going on in one small little area um, in the staging area where you first enter uh, Nyege Nyege. It was just, you know, a bit overwhelming. It's kind of like sensory overload. You got bit, you know, the blasting music coming from the festival. Then you got people calling you. You know, that's one thing that's kind of annoying that I really don't enjoy about here. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. But the, the thing of these guys calling you, calling you, everybody's trying to get your attention. Like, you can't focus on what you're trying to do. And it's kind of hard. I'm a bit seasoned at this. So I know how to just, you know, ignore people. But I can only imagine as someone who just got there. And you're just trying to look around and everybody's trying to get your attention. Boda's trying to get your attention. Vendors trying to get your attention. Kids trying to get your attention. Everybody is trying to get your attention to do something, sell you something or something of that nature. All right. So that was a bit overwhelming and it was something that I did not enjoy. But um, that's nothing that's going to change. You know what I'm saying? That's just, that's just the culture and the environment here. That's something that you guys are going to have to worry about. Or not worry about, but something that you're going to have to be aware of when you come here. If you're one of those type of people that gets overwhelmed very quickly, just um, try to focus on that one thing, which is getting through the gates. You know what I'm saying? Um, other than that, um, the camping area. Let's get into the camping area. Because <laughs> this is where it gets a little fishy all right so the camping area was not set up as well as i thought it would the location was perfect i mean you had a beautiful view of itanda falls both sides of the falls and then um where the camping area was set up you can watch the sun fall or the sun yeah the sun set um right over the hills just just in your area so you just come out your tent and this little sitting area uh on on a hill and uh, i took mad pictures from over there it's a perfect area to watch the sunset, you know, to end your day or to start it, you know what I'm saying? Because I didn't get started until the sun goes, until the sun went down. So I tried to make sure I got as much filming done as possible. And then when the sun went down, you already know what time it is. So, um, with that being said, um, the camping area, I didn't stay. I didn't camp out, out there. I only went in, I thugged it out. For like 36 hours i really had no intentions on sleeping at night anyway it was it was gruesome but you know i enjoyed it. i had a, a really really good time um make sure you bring proper footwear because uh huh, huh it got muddy <laughs> and you're moving around a lot you know what i'm saying something that's comfortable to walk in something that you don't mind getting dirty and something of that nature don't bring your jordans out there because <laughs> they ain't gonna be jordans no more you know what i mean <laughs> But um, yeah, the camping area was not as uh, extravagant as I thought it would be. I don't know why I thought it would be so, so extravagant, but it really wasn't even that, that great to me. Um, and then also like the shower and the wash, the, yeah, the washing shower area and the toilet area, some of them were even, weren't even finished. You know what I mean? Like, what's up with that? You know, I felt like they had plenty of time to finish everything, but apparently they didn't. So uh, I, I heard a rumor that somebody got arrested for, you know, cheating people out of their money, you know, selling tents that weren't there, selling areas that was already sold or taken. And then the whole uh, toilet area, somebody was paid to do that service and then they didn't finish it. So, you know, they took all the money and didn't finish the work, basically. And that's classic, typical in some areas around. So, unfortunately, that is something that did take place. But there were enough toilets all over the whole entire place to where people didn't have to go, you know, poop outside in, 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 in the woods or something like that. You know what I mean? Uh, so, that was really the one thing that I felt like they dropped the ball on. It was the camping area just was too clustered. It was way too many tents in one small little area, in my opinion. And me personally, if I go camping, I like to be spread out. I don't like to, you know, be just jumbled up um, with everybody. You know what I'm saying? Especially at an event like that, because you know people was getting it in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> people was doing the nasty and all types of stuff. So I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear you snoring. I don't want to hear what you're doing in your tent. Whatever it is you're doing, I don't want to hear it. So that's one of the things that I, I try to look for 
when I'm going uh, to a festival of this nature, I try to be, you know, separated from other people, something of that nature. And then there was another um, place called Glamping. They had Glamping. I'm not sure what that whole thing was about, but they had tents that were set up on site, or you can bring your own tent. And they had bigger tents, smaller two-man tents, uh, bigger four-man tents. And then they had these uh, shelters that were like made out of plyboard. Now those ones actually look pretty trash to me. I'm not gonna lie about that. They, they weren't even set up nice or properly. No colors on them, no paint, nothing like that. You know what I mean? It wasn't anything extravagant. It was like some makeshift tent or whatever a shelter a makeshift shelter that was you know set up at a ply boards and i felt like you know if it rained hard enough the rain was definitely going to enter that place so um that was something that was like nah that's not for me and i ain't trying to be bougie about it because I, I i be camping and i thug it out when i camp but that right there was scary i'm not doing nothing like that you know what i mean i i promise you your boy will never be in a place like that doing something of that nature all right so other than that, that is the one thing I can compare when it comes to um, Fire Festival. That was the one thing, uh, one of the few things that I can compare because it, they really dropped the ball on that one, honestly. So I feel bad for anybody who paid all that money and had to, you know, live in the ghetto, basically. <laughs> I feel bad for you guys, but I mean, if you enjoyed it, then you like it, I love it, right? You like it, I love it. That's, that's how I'm saying. So other than that, uh, let's move forward. Um, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. It was absolutely amazing. The stage setup, the 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 DJs that they had out there, the artists who came to perform. Um, oh, I snuck backstage. <laughs> hey, yeah, I got some exclusive footage from uh, backstage um, that you guys will see now. Uh, so basically, I know a few TV and radio presenters um, that work for MBS, and um, a few of them actually remembered me. So I managed to finesse my way backstage without actually having to pass or having to pay for a media ba a badge or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm King Obatuna. I'm going to do what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to try to stop me best way you can. Play. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, I got backstage. I got to meet Palazzo and uh, so many other artists. You know what I'm saying? But the main reason why I even came to Nyege Nyege is because of the South African uh, event or the the djs that were coming there like virgo deep is one of them um that that came and played and i got behind stage on that one too yeah so uh <laughs> i had a ball yo i had so much fun y'all don't even understand i had so much fun yo it was just an amazing journey um an amazing time the event was just absolutely amazing uh getting behind stage meeting these artists taking pictures and videos stuff like that some of my videos did not come out as great as i thought they would unfortunately because of reasons you know and plus i was a little drunk so eh, whatever you know don't judge me judge your mama don't judge me anyway um the stages that were around uh you had um the boiler room stage for those of you who know about the boiler room they play like a lot of house music stuff like that so i definitely lingered around those stages they had another one it's called the dark tent which was like a more techno um what's that um it's like trance or something like that but it was it was definitely uh, it's type of music that's acquired taste, but I, I, I kind of like that deep techno uh, type stuff or trip hop or whatever, you know what I mean? That's that's kind of what they were playing. And um, I enjoy it sometimes, especially, you know, as drunk as I was, I, I was listening to everything. They had another tent uh, or stage that was set up in the downer area that was playing uh, some of that Kadongo Kadodi music, which is like local, uh, local Ugandan music, like old school stuff and a lot of local artists um so if you were into like local ugandan music like real village type local music then that was definitely a place that you would want to go to so um they had another main stage where there was the one that i stuck behind stage that was where a lot of the the primary artists were playing the primary djs like um zahara toto and uh palazzo and those are the ones I can name off the top of my head. It was so many other people. There was like this legendary guy, I forgot his name, but he was supposed to be like a huge legend in the music industry uh, over in Nigeria. Uh, this guy was there, he celebrated his 80th birthday and uh, I got to see him, got to meet him for the first time. Took a few pictures, which didn't come out great, so it's unfortunate. But yeah, so they had a bunch of stages. Um, what other stages they had? Uh, hmm, 
they had another one where people were doing like these uh, dance battles and stuff like that. That was like a main stage. And they were just playing every music, like, you know, music that you would hear on the radio, stuff like that. So all in all, they had plenty of stages, plenty of places to, you know, listen to music. The DJs were rotating every 30 to 45 minutes, I believe, or every hour or something like that. So, I mean, it, the setup was, it was insane. It was massive. I can only imagine the budget that they had for it, the amount of money they spent getting this stuff done. Um, it must have been a lot because they had an armored car convoy come and pick up the bread, you know what I'm saying? So it must have been something. So, um, yeah, the stage setup was amazing. So you guys are really into African music. Definitely try to make your way to Nyege Nyege for the next event because that is something that you guys are going to enjoy. It was a wonderful, wonderful experience. I had so much fun the entire time. The, uh, oh, I didn't even get to the food vendors. Let me, let me get to the food vendors. The food vendors, wow, yo, oh my God. Oh my God, if you're a foodie and you like festival food and stuff like that, yo, bring a bring a bag, because you're definitely going to drop a bag, bro. I kid you not, yo. I ate so much. I, I, that's another reason why I drank so much, because there was so much food everywhere, you know what I mean? Every place had these drinks, mixed drinks and cocktails and stuff like that. Um, early in the morning, like uh, after oh, I had partied hard that night, woke up, got me some fresh food, uh, local food. Um, I even got some fresh smoothies and stuff like that, so it was fruit everywhere, fresh fruit everywhere, fresh juice everywhere, alcohol, whatever you, whatever you wanted to drink basically was there, you understand, whatever you wanted to eat was there, I mean meat kebabs everywhere, vegetable dishes, all types of stuff, you know, people walking around drinking drinks out of coconuts and stuff, I mean it was amazing, I really had a good time, I really liked the fact that they blended, um, local culture and international culture together to make this event and that's what what i feel was the best part about Nyege Nyege is bringing the international community and the local community together now when i say international community i don't mean just western people from like europe uh in in america south america stuff like that because those are the people that are around i mean also international uh community as far as africans there were plenty of other in, in um countries of uh, african people there you know, they had Burundian drummers there, uh, people from TZ there, cultural dancers from TZ, cultural dancers from Kenya, stuff like that, you know what I mean? They really managed to blend African culture and international culture together and to create a very special and wonderful place. And I highly recommend that the next Yege and Yege that happens, I know they're gonna do it better, I know it's gonna be more secure, everything is gonna be much more safer, and I know they're gonna go all out. So I highly recommend that if you guys are into things like this, that you go and you experience it because it's gonna be a wonderful, wonderful experience so uh, other than that I will mention uh, briefly some of the bad things that I did see um, I just want to point out you know a few things that um, everybody that was at Yege Yege are grown ass men and women and one thing I can't stand is a, a grown ass man or woman who can't hold their liquor who can't um, maintain their composure while they're at events like this you know what I'm saying yes you can come here and have fun and have a good time but don't do it uh, to to a degree to where you're just all messed up and you, you can't even you're not even coherent anymore You know what I'm saying you're becoming a burden on the entire community at this point I mean it was so many people that was passed out drunk everywhere just all over the ground You would think it was dead bodies everywhere. You know what I mean? It, it, that That's the one thing that kind of bothered me Well one of the few things that kind of bothered me about that is that you know There's too many young people who don't know how to control themselves or don't have that self-control and don't know how to maintain their composure when they're in a place like this. They just allow the ambience of the event to take control and they just lose absolutely all control for themselves. The other thing that I hate is the fact that you have individuals, human beings, who prey on other people who get too messed up like that. You understand? These people take advantage of you being all drunk and all messed up and not being able to um, maintain yourself. You understand and near pickpockets and thieves it wasn't as um present as i expected it to be and it's because of the heavy heavy police uh um presence i mean i, I heard that there were a lot of you know people who got their phone jacked but i also heard that a lot of those people got their stuff recovered within the 24 hours you understand that i was there within the 24 hours that i was there i heard a few cases i even saw uh, people complaining to police and i also saw people getting dragged out by police and I saw people getting their things back, you know what I'm saying? So once again, it was safe and secure. They did have a major police presence and the police and the military did their job. So thank you for 
the United Police Forces, and thank you for the UPDF who are there present doing their jobs and keeping us safe so we can have a good time. And uh, just a simple message to everyone out there, if you come to events like this, have some self-control, please, have some self-control. We don't need no babysitters out there, you know what I'm saying? I'm not a babysitter, I'm not babysitting nobody. I don't like, you know, being around people who get too messed up like that. I can't stand it, you know what I mean? So that that's just, you know, something that I just want to throw out there to you guys. Also, um, I had to break up a fight too. I had to separate these guys when I was in a dark tent because these guys wanted to fight, getting all emotional and stuff like that. I don't even know what they were even talking about half the time. Um, but you know, anyway, that's neither here nor there. You know, these guys don't come here for that kind of violence. I understand, you know, somebody disrespects you or they harm you in some kind of way. You're going to be, you know, in, in defense, but let the security forces, let police handle these things. Don't take it upon yourself to, you know, get into a fight because you're just going to ruin the event for everybody and it's just not going to be good. And then, it's going to be hard for you to explain yourself to the police out here. I'm telling you right now. So don't do not do it. Don't get into it because it's just not worth it. All right. It's really, really, really not worth it. So family, uh, once again, you guys, um, I highly recommend Yege Yege to anybody who wants to come for the next event. Uh, it's a whole year from now, so you have plenty of time to prepare. Uh, it's definitely a great experience. I had such a good time. I met so many artists, so many of uh, my friends. I was even on TV. Uh, this guy named Denzel UG, go follow him on Instagram. He's also a radio presenter, uh, I think at Exhibit Radio or something of that nature. Um, he he spotted me out of a crowd and, and, and had me on TV. So I'm not sure when that's going to drop or if it will, but definitely, uh, you know, have a lookout for that or something like that. And um, my final thoughts on this whole event is just that overall it was just a great experience. I definitely recommend that they do it again. This is a great thing for Uganda because it brings a lot of exposure to this country. Already this country has a lot of exposure, good and bad. So this event actually brought a lot of good exposure to uh, Uganda. So I highly recommend you guys come out here again. So with that being said, I'm going to wrap this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, peace and love and blessings to everyone. Um, thank you guys for tuning in to this episode. If you are a new subscriber or a new person and you like my content, go ahead and subscribe now. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss an episode. Leave me a comment. Leave me a thumbs up. If you have any questions or concerns, you can leave me a comment. You can email me at kingobatunda at gmail.com. You can DM me on Instagram at King Obatunda. I'm going to be dropping exclusive content on Instagram and on my TikTok, so make sure you follow my TikTok, which is King underscore Obatunda. And you guys uh, look out for more content coming up, alright? Have a blessed and wonderful day, and I'm out. Peace!